Welcome to another Freedom Net Daily Report. I'm DW reporting for Freedom Net Daily. I want us just to look a little bit more at this black genocide that I labeled in last week's video uh, concerning what is going on in Libya. I had a lot of comments that came through. Those of you who commented, uh, many of them negative in actuality, uh, saying that, uh, you know, that this stuff isn't real or you're taking sides with Gaddafi or all this kind of nonsense. I'm not a Gaddafi fan, never have been. But then again, I'm not a fan of going in and uh, tearing up countries and bringing uh, terrorists from other perspective places that have been built, Al-Qaeda and other types of uh, operations in order to create this crisis that took place in Libya to overthrow Gaddafi because they couldn't overthrow him in other, in other ways. So now we have a new regime that's based upon Al-Qaeda type of operatives. And now we see what is going to be the result of it uh, and what has taken place. And I want to put these articles, show you them, and uh, then uh, we'll come back and finish it off. Okay, look, I know that most of you out there uh, that uh, are, are concerned and really understand what this is all about, but these that are putting these comments onto the YouTubes, uh, obviously most of them operatives, uh, some of them possibly even part of the Libyan uh, rebel camps that have been uh, designed, that have been created in order to counterbalance the truth, counterbalance the things that we need to understand what's going on in Libya and the neocons that want to continue this war that are going to keep building it up building up these different wars around the uh, uh, the middle east areas now let's look at them i'm going to look at several articles i got a lot of information here to to, to put in just a short few minutes i don't want to make it lengthy so that you'll hang on and watch okay and listen and pay attention because these are important and I got a couple embedded videos I want you to see, so let, let's move on with it. Libyan rebels, okay, now I'm going to move this down and get my mug out of the way for you so you can see the article. Libyan rebels round up blacks, put them in prison camps. I want, I want you to first uh, understand that these are, I'm going to show you some pictures, I'm going to, you know, and you're going to say they're not real or they're, or they're uh, you know, they're maybe just, uh, uh, you know, yeah, they just took these shots and they put these people in there just so you people like you can keep putting out this information. Believe what you want. But I know that there's most of you out there that know what the truth is and you will keep working to get this out, get these articles out, get these videos out so that we can slow this war, neocon war machine down and begin to uh, and, and get this information out and that we can also, this, this ties right in with, with, with Ron Paul for president because he understands the perplexity and what is going on over there and what has been created. We need to get this information out. We need to get the people, these neocons out there that are riding the fence. They think that, yeah, they may not like Romney. They may not like Rick Perry, but they're still trying to push Bachman. Or now you see Palin because Bachman's failing. So they got the new Tea Party to try to counterbalance uh, Ron Paul and try to destroy him by tying her nonsense, her neocon nonsense, and when they finish destroying her, because she's a little uh, minion, she's a little puppet, and I'm not going to go into details on what I feel about all of what's going on with her, because it's perplexed. But at any rate, let's go on with the article. I don't want to keep you too long. Libyan, uh, and this is Paul Joseph Watts. You can see Watts, and you can see it on your screen there. Uh, Libyan rebels round up blacks, put them in prison camps. 
Massacre, torture, and abuse of innocence destroys NATO's humanitarian limacy. Okay, NATO back, and I'm going to read a little bit of this, then I'm going to go to the other articles, uh, and it's best, I just want to do with this. NATO-backed Libyan rebels are rounding up thousands of innocent black migrants and taking them to prison camps as part of mass reprisals that include reports of discriminant killings and mistreatment. Okay, what, while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you these. Uh, uh, some, let me find the picture here. Okay, we see a picture. There's a, your, uh, there's a picture of these prison camps. The, what, what does this kind of remind you of? What are the FEMA camps going to be built of when we have mass rioting and different things take place here in this country and they say well we got to lock it down looks like a sports center stadium and we've got very clear evidence that they're going to use sports stadiums in this country to gather up the uh, non-compliance or the uh, those that they deem should be placed into prison camps Okay, so as part of the mass reprisals that include reports of indiscriminate killings, mistreatment, and torture as a humanitarian veneer of the West military invention quickly crumbles, migrant blacks and sub-Saharan Africans comprise one-third of the entire Libyan population and a minority were hired by Gaddafi as mercenary fighters, but rebels are treating them all as enemy combatants with reports of abuse, murders, and mass arrest increasing in volume. Rebel forces and armed civilians are rounding up thousands of black, Libyans, and migrants from sub-Sahara Africa, accusing them of fighting or ousted strong man Mohammer, Mohammer Gaddafi and holding them in makeshift jails across the capital reports the Associated Press. The AP story notes that virtually all the victims are innocent migrant workers and have not fought for Gaddafi, but rebels are still rounding them up and interning them in sports, stadium, and other prison camps simply on the basis of their skin color. Okay, let's look at it. Here's the article. Libyan rebels round up black Africans, Associated Press. You can see the uh, URL address at the screen there, or if you can't because it's in the way, uh, just, just uh, put in Libyan rebels round up black Africans, and you'll come up with the Associated Press article. And uh, part of this article says virtually all of the detainees say they are innocent migrant workers. In most ca cases, there is no evidence that they are lying. But that is not stopping the rebels from placing the men in facilities like the Gate of Sea Sports Club, where about 200 detainees, all black, clustered on a soccer field. This week, bunching against a high wall to avoid the scorching sun. So, very suspicious type of activity here. Boy, didn't they think of that. I wonder if they're, you know, maybe they've been reading the, uh, the, the, uh, the plans for FEMA camps. Or maybe our CIA is instructing them how to do it because... They've been studying how they're going to do it to Americans. Oh, isn't that nice? Okay, let's. Okay, so we've seen that article. Now I want to take you here to a, uh, a video, a video piece with uh, uh, a former admiral. What was a general? What is he? A NATO commander, West, a four-star general. There we go. We'll get it out in a minute four-star general who also had involvement in the Yugoslavia uh, uprising. But here he mentions that there are uh, the neocon plan to attack seven countries in five years. Now, makes you wonder, okay, 
here he is. He's pushing all the Democrat politics. So he's fallen in. Don't don't think that Clark is Mr. Good Guy because Mr. Good Guy here is really a Democratic operative from the left side, left right paradigm. Make sure that we keep everything in its proper perspective. And he but he comes out. And this is how you have to find these people and know that they uh, they they're playing a part but yet they're going to put out certain information and that's how the globalists do it they're going to put out information that is truth but you have to understand that the truth that they're putting out is based upon what they're trying to feed the American people which is a left-right paradigm let's look at what Wesley Clark says about the coming seven countries that the globalists plan on uh, occupying or at minimum cre creating these disruptions and these wars and these fights to, impl to implement their globalist uh, plans. Here we go. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later. I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office. It says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. I said, seven, seven countries in five years. I said, is that a classified memo? He said, yes, sir. I said, well, don't show it to me. He was about to show it to me. He said, because I want to talk about it. And... I, I, I sat on this information I, for a long time, for about six or eight months. I, I was so stunned by this, I couldn't begin to talk about it. And I couldn't believe it would really be true, but that's actually what happened. Uh, these people took control of the policy in the United States. And I realized then, it came back to me, a 1991 meeting I had with Paul Wolfowitz. You know, in 2001, he was Deputy Secretary of Defense, but in 1991, he was the Under Secretary of Defense for Policy. It's the number three position in the Pentagon. And I had gone to see him when I was a one-star general. I was commanding the National Training Center. I had met him one time. He said, if you ever get to Washington, come look me up. They always say that. Well, I was there in Washington. It was a Friday afternoon. I'd visited Colin Powell. He'd give me five okay, minutes uh, of his precious time. And I, up. The main thing I wanted to get through, there is some more to that. Uh, go see this video. Uh, if you want to watch the whole thing, uh, it's up uh, right now. It's up at Infowars, one of the newer ones that's uh, up there. Now, the video was actually recorded, as you can see on your screen, October 3rd, 2007. But uh, I wanted to show you that what I'm telling you is, you know, this is their, this is their plans. I don't, I think, you know, that this little story he created pretty much is 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 a contrived story it's a story that it really happened but he already knew all this information this man here was involved in the uh uh yugoslavian uh takeover in fact let's see if i can find that uh, article uh where it talks of that maybe it's on this one here Okay, well here, let, let's look at this. This is a video from uh, that deals with that uh, Yugoslavian connection to what's taking place here in Libya. And this Yugoslavian connection, the reason I'm showing it to you is because Wesley Clark, Clark was behind this. This man, in essence, is a war criminal. He's wanted... Wesley Clark, and what was he wanted for? Guilty of 19 separate crimes by the members of International War Crimes Tribunal, including killing and injuring a defenseless population throughout Yugoslavia and using depleted DU uranium, cluster bombs, and other prohibited weapons. During the war on Yugoslavia, Clark proposed bombing oil pipelines in Hungary as well as Russian ships in the vicinity. During his standoff between NATO and Russian troops, Clark attempted to have British paratroopers storm Pristina 
of Pristina Airport, he was ultimately responsible for the use of such outlawed weaponry as cluster bombs. So we see Mr. Webster Wesley Clark is a uh, uh, part of that. Let's let's just take a quick look here and show because this does go back quite a ways with the Yugoslavian. Some of us uh, may not even uh, recall when this. I do personally, of course, but uh, there are others out there that don't and weren't uh, aware what was going on, uh, or we just accepted the little Bosnian movie that took place in the in the downing of the jet crash and the hero that lived through it and all this type of thing. They make a movie out of it. I remember what the name of it was and all that stuff. But yeah, this is, that's what we get fed, and that's what we we learn to remember. Here's the real thing. In Montreal, Canada, we go to Michelle Chosodovsky, editor of globalresearch.ca. All right, Michelle, first off, clearly we're not the only ones drawing these parallels between Libya and the former Yugoslavia. Uh, you know, the White House has a lot of intelligence on this. What do you think the administration thinks it's doing differently this time? Well, first of all, we have to understand that Yugoslavia, in a sense, provided the assumptions for subsequent humanitarian bombings. The way they did it in 1999, I recall it 12 years ago, and I was involved in, in, in uh, researching it in very much detail, is that they had established a very detailed list of targets. And in fact, these were called uh, legitimate military targets, but they also included car plants, bridges, TV stations, schools and 17th century churches and historical monuments. So that we're not dealing with a military uh, humanitarian operation to save civilians. The very act of bombing destroys life and destroys a country. And I, I, from the reports that we're getting from Libya, that is exactly what is happening. The bombings are not strictly directed against military targets. They're going, they are, they are also bombing hospitals. We, we had uh, two or th a couple of reports. Um, of course, the media is not covering uh, the, what is actually going on on the ground in, in Libya. Well, just sticking with this connection, Michelle, I mean, I, I'm wondering what you think people, uh, you know, who live in the area, the former Yugoslavia, uh, what they say about the U.S. involvement 12 years ago uh, today. Well, a lot, a lot of people in the Serbian community are drawing those parallels, and a lot of people uh, who, uh, who analyze it are drawing those parallels. I should mention there's another, there's another dimension of this whole thing. Uh, the pretext for intervention in Yugoslavia was to come to the rescue of ethnic Albanians and to support the Kosovo Liberation Army. Uh, and what they were saying is that Serbia was committing atrocities. It turned out it was the Kosovo Liberation Army linked up to organized crime, to the drug trade, which was in fact responsible for those atrocities. So they came in and they said, we have an insurrection, uh, uh, we want to support uh, a humanitarian uh, undertaking, we are, we're siding with the Kosovo Liberation Army, um, even though they knew at the time that the Kosovo Liberation Army was not only connected to the, to the Italian Mafia, but it was also linked up with Al-Qaeda. And, uh, and so those, those uh, parallels have to be drawn. We don't even know today what, who this opposition is. And I think it's not with, without, uh, and I think we have to analyze it, but we know, and that has been acknowledged by, by Western media, that there are members of the Libya uh, Islamic um, uh, fighter group, which is uh, an affiliate of Al-Qaeda, which has integrated our position. It is supposed to be a minor segment, but nonetheless, it's also there. All right, so you're saying 12 years ago, the U.S. got involved in this mission to side with the KLA. You're saying okay. the KLA... So we have the same basic things going on now that we've seen going on in, in uh, Kosovo, in uh, old uh, Yugoslavia. And... What do we see? We see the same types of corruption. We see Al-Qaeda involved. We see the creation of 
the siding with this Kosovo KLA that was running the dope, that was uh, creating the terrorism, and all within that, you have uh, intelligence operations, CIA, MI6, and others involved in there. And then we turn around and we support the same enemy, enemy Al Qaeda, that we say is the ones that ran the 9 11 hoax uh, into the Twin Towers. Well, there you go. Here we are. Uh, now, let's look at just a couple other things. In all this, what is, in, 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 so I've tied all this together to say here we see the same bunch. Uh, this Libyan Al Qaeda connection with the Benghazi, uh, the Benghazi bunch. Uh, let's see if I can find that real quick. Here we are. The very nature of the Benghazi rebels has been deceptively presented to the public. In fact, they are a collection of extremists and mercenaries, many of whom have been fighting recently in Iraq and Afghanistan against U.S. forces. So we create these people they kill our men our soldiers our sons our daughters they kill them we turn around and we export them into other countries to try to overthrow the other countries after they've been killing our own people that's the kind of neocon war that you people out there that are neocon conservative uh, many of you calling yourself Christians and cannot see that your own government has turned on you. That is no longer your government. It's the government run by the banksters to destroy you. And then they're going to turn around and they're going to put FEMA in place and they're going to run FEMA because now they call FEMA your federal family. Your federal family is the one that is now going in. It's going to drive you out of your homes when they create these disturbances or when they have these these uh, big hoaxes they call hurricane uh, uh, things and all this type of stuff. And FEMA goes in. And I've seen it on Facebook already from people up in Vermont that were as a result of the flooding and the different things they're saying. You best get in there and get what you need from your home because FEMA is going to stop you from being able to go into that home and you're not going to recover any of it. So this is your big brother, your family, your federal family. The, and, and Ron Paul come out against them. He spoke about it. He says, we don't need them. All they do is get in the way and they stop people from being able to recover and they stop people from going back to their homes. And then we see uh, it's okay for Saudi Arabia. And I'm going, I'm, I'm skipping around a little bit, but remember I tied FEMA and you've seen what they're doing to these uh, uh, blacks in, uh, in Libya and how they're rounding them up. This is all part of the FEMA camps. This is all part of the same training. This is all getting us acclimated to all this type of thing that's going on. And it's allowing our soldiers to be able to go in. These, these CIA and all these different types is being run. And they've trained them how to do it. And then they put them in these camps. And then in places like Saudi Arabia that go in and attack or uh, go in and prevent peaceful rioting by the Bahrainians. Remember how old Hillary got in there? I, I might have this in the way. I moved that down so you can see the entire title in case you want to go in and uh, plug it in. It's a Palm Beach Post report. Uh, just plug in FEMA, Palm Beach, be, uh, FEMA Federal Family in Palm Beach and you'll come up with this article. Okay? But anyway, the Bahrainians now they go in to riot as the Egyptians did and Hillary gets up and says, oh, well, they should be allowed to riot. No, that was a hoax. Okay, here, look, this is the Bahrainians do. What do they do? They're being tear gassed. And where's all this tear gas coming from? It's coming from big corporate inside of U.S. 
and all that tear gas being sent over there and they're practicing using it on the Bahrainians and you can see the, the story that this is killing these young kids with tear gas, tear gas canisters being fired into the midst of these peaceful protests and you can see the results of some of that and a big article on this young teenager uh, let me let me just uh, uh, blow this up a little bit so you can see the uh, the, t the uh, headlines here in case you want to look it up uh, Bahrain US ally kills children so when is NATO intervening okay they're not okay they were there that they, they that's why they got Saudi Arabia to go in there and that's why we're supplying the tear gas and that's why we have uh, uh, FEMA here preparing us for protests and they're going to have tear gas and they're going to have sound weapons and they're going to have all these different things when the american people finally wake up and they get tired of the banksters running this show all right so uh let's uh let's get this out you people out there you 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 operatives you you sickening little puny operatives out there that are putting these things onto the youtube it ain't gonna fly people know the truth they know what you're up to we they know you're you're the crooks you're the criminals you're the operatives being paid to go on to these networks social networks YouTube sites and whatever to put on this bunch of crap this bunch of garbage it ain't gonna work okay it ain't gonna work. all right I hope this helps you out this video has been informative for you I hope you do your research. I hope you guys uh, all get your videos out, get your YouTubes out. It's up to all of us to build this army of freedom and liberty, get the word out. It's important that we all get the understanding and the information out so that when we do get Ron Paul in as president, it's not up to one man. He says that. It's up to everyone. It's up to all of us to build liberty. I know some of the uh, sound, I listened to some of the sound a little bit, a little bit of it, so I, I got a little thing there, I got to figure out how to uh, get out the uh, speaker noise from bleeding over in the microphone, but I think you heard it all good enough, and it's getting a little better, video's getting a little better, so hope you enjoy it, hope you learn from it, most importantly, and take it and... and uh, Use it, break it up, do what you need to do if you want to. It's fine. Take care. And uh, I'm DW, reporting for FreedomNetDaily.com. And we'll see you on the next report. So long now.